Okay, all right. Looks like we are live on May 3rd, 2016. I'm Bob, Bob the Axeman Hildebrand here with... Pam Bill. Excellent. What do you how, do, how do you forget your... I'm I almost Bob. said Bill first, so... Good Lord. It was weird. Uh, anyway, today we're uh, our the theme for our show is Airsoft Innovations. Not only is it covering a company whose products I like a lot, but we're also going to talk uh, a little bit more about you know different game changers or different uh, innovations in the airsoft industry in the in the past few years. Uh, mainly today, we're going to talk about you know products that have been very innovative, um, and then go over. We actually got some new custom guns in, so we're going to talk about those in a little bit. Um, so. If you guys have any questions, feel free to throw it in the comments section, we'll, and we'll answer them uh, when we can. We're going to check in pretty randomly. Uh, but first and foremost, I uh, want to remind everyone we do have global shipping. We ship all over the world, except for North Korea. Uh, you just got to add whatever you want if you live outside of the U.S. to your cart and hit that blue global checkout button. It'll actually let you know ahead of time if, there, if there's any taxes, duties, or fees you have to, have to pay ahead of time. Uh, Duty. <laughs> um, but that being said, why don't we show you some of these cool guns we got from our tech department. This looks pretty interesting. Uh, do you know the name of this one? That one is, let me grab the bag tag. The bag oh, tag. I'm going to die. Yeah, it's crazy. This one is called Z. Okay, like Airsoft it. GI Custom M4 Mud Wrestler. Mud Wrestler. I actually kind of like the I Mud feel like, Wrestler. I feel like they're kind of running out of names, but that's, that's not a bad that's one for this. Clever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it. And then so. the other one, the AK that I was holding, is the Airsoft GI Custom AK. Oh, man. Romantidin? Romantidin? See if you can pronounce it. It's, it, I feel like it's something from a game or something I, I've never played. Romanted in. I've never heard of that okay. word. Okay. Yeah. Well, regardless, besides of it having a weird name, the camo job on that AK is legit. So. Well, and also, the I just noticed this, the enlarged charging handle, because this is a gas blowback. Mm -hmm. That's that nice. That is a very satisfying Actually, yeah, let me, let me Even the bolt is painted. That's cool. That's nice. Oh, yeah, that's cool. This is legit. I'll, I'll take the Mud Wrestler for 500 Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's the actual price. I just wanted to turn it into. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I like this. I, I've, I've actually never seen a rail, uh, this specific type of rail on an AK uh, style airsoft gun before. This is really neat. Uh, and you guys probably can't see this, but this this is an almost, uh, awesome camo scheme. Uh, they got a couple different varieties of green in here, along with some uh, uh, black. It looks like just a little like brush. Uh, and a hint brush of brown. Shorts, yeah. <coughs> that, is, that is really cool. So you don't have pricing on, on either of these? Uh, no, we literally just got them in like an hour ago. Wow, this is cool as hell. Uh, so anyway, for, I don't want to like just kind of go crazy all over these just by myself, but if you guys ever want a custom gun, uh, at airsoftia.com we have new custom, custom guns dropping on our website. Seems like every week, but we've yeah. definitely got a gaggle of them every single month. Uh, so if you guys are looking for something unique, something new, something one of a kind, check on AirsoftGI.com. We're one of the only shops in the uh, industry that releases customs consistently. We and do have one more. Ah, yes. It's a much larger one. But this one's a perfect tactical trainer. I know that. So for those of you that don't know what a perfect tactical trainer is, it means it uses real uh, firearm pieces. Like this one, for example, it's got a real... Uh, what is this one? Megafin's uh, M-Lock rail. Yeah, generally the perfect tactical trainer is that they use That's real true. accessories or rails so that you have perfect fitment if you're using <coughs> your own stuff for your real ARs or other other real firearms. And this one's called a... Oh, man, I just saw it. I, damn it. Uh, the Desert Strike is what this one is called. And I really... I actually now... Actually, I really like this rail. Uh, I believe Jackman was asking how much for the AK. We don't have an exact price on this, uh, correct? No, not yet. We literally just got these in, so yeah. we, we, ha we haven't gotten a chance to... Uh, Get them up on the site just yet. Just got them in. They will be going on our site very shortly. So, Jackman, if you are looking for this AK, stay tuned to airsoftgi.com because more than likely this thing will be up first thing tomorrow morning or at least early on in the day. So, uh, hopefully, you can check the price on that. I'm sorry we don't have it right away. Uh, what was this one called again? This one's called the Desert Strike. Desert. I really like, actually, I'm, I'm actually really digging this rail system. It looks like it's almost like a 15 inch rail system, I think. Mm -hmm. Right around there. It might even be longer, but. Feel how light it is. Oh yeah, that's way lighter than I thought. Kind of makes me want to like build an AR with that rail system on. I actually well, really like the make. Oh, it says right here, sixteen point two five. Hmm. I wish we should just like keep the scale in here so we can just weigh these guns as they come. Right, in the just office, the so. well, we got the hanging one, right? The, the yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
Uh, oh, nice. Uh, so I was actually talking about this, I believe, in the last live show, this uh, Unity mount. Uh, oh, okay. PTS yeah, you me makes that. Unity mounts. Uh, they're really, really great pieces of equipment. It's basically the Swiss Army blade of mounting accessories to your gun. It comes with, I can't remember how many mounts, but just a rough guess, like six different mounts. So you can mount it forward, you can mount the flashlight a little offset, you can mount it right on top. There's just so many options with the Unity mount. I mean, it's not the most... It's not the most affordable kit for your gun, however, it does a lot of different things. So if you guys have a chance, check out the Unity mount um, uh, pushed out by PTS. Uh, it's a great set of equipment, especially if you like to run accessories or optics, or excuse me, accessories like lights and lasers or anything else on your airsoft guns. But yeah, this is a really cool setup. Is the barrel go all the way to the end? I think it does. Uh, well, that's no, very interesting. DMR. And it's nice, it's very lightweight. So uh, what was this called again? The Desert Strike. The Desert Strike. So look forward to each of these three guns on our website, more than likely very early tomorrow. There so pretty cool. And this is uh, the base gun for this build is an Echo One Platinum. Um, yeah, OEM VFC. Yeah, exactly. So really cool. Really cool. Actually, I, I really like this rail system. Yeah, right? I don't want it. Um, Tactical Pyro is asking, are grenade launchers worth it? Uh, my personal opinion, I think they're worth it because they're a lot of fun. A lot of things in Airsoft they are really are. about how much fun you can feasibly have. Now, if you're looking for how effective are they on target, that's kind of a mixed bag because, you know, you, sometimes you'll play at fields where, you know, the standard grenade launcher round, which is essentially just a giant shotgun round, a lot of people <clears> will call that hit. You know, other fields uh, where I've played at before, you know, a guy goes around a corner, launches a grenade shell and it hits like probably 10 different people and no one calls her hits like they just like no I didn't get hit I didn't feel anything so it's it's kind of tough it can be very frustrating when you're in that situation you get the perfect hit on all these dudes and then you know no one has a sense of honor or will call it it's very frustrating however you know with with a good group of people you know you can have a lot of fun with that and in you know milsim games mm -hmm. or certain other events uh, you can also get tag rounds which some of them are are uh, pyrotechnic rounds, others just spread chalk around, and others are dummy rounds. And those can be used to take out vehicles. So, you know, if you were at an event or going to an event where a grenade launcher will help you take out a vehicle, that makes you that much more important to your squad, your platoon, your company. Uh, and I think that can really bring up the fun value if you're that one guy with those uh, anti-armor rounds. Well, actually, so. I'd say that's an innovation right there, those tag rounds. Because mm -hmm. I remember for the longest time, it was only like, you know, your shotgun shells or the one that shot like a foam cap. And when you shoot the foam cap, it'd be like, you know, and like it would never go where you're aiming. Yeah, thank you for getting me back on topic. Um, we we want to talk about innovations, and yeah, like the the tag rounds are, are a serious innovation for airsoft because you're right. You know, the old you know rocket rounds for airsoft, um, which if you guys don't know, it's essentially like a foam rocket you'd put on the head of a of a, a grenade launcher shotgun shell round. They were never very accurate at all. And More accurate than that foam cap, though. That's for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. The foam cap and shoot out just. It, I mean, it could come back and hit you. You don't you don't know, but. Um, so most, most of the folks nowadays that have rocket launchers um, are using uh, those old Nerf like mini footballs yeah. with the arrow on mm -hmm. the end, which actually does work pretty well. Oh yeah. However, for certain Milsom games, you know, you get a tag round, it's satisfying to launch it off and then hear the crack of the explosion and then, you know, either guys like laying down and go, oh God, it hurts so bad, or like a vehicle stopping, putting up the red flag, showing that they've been destroyed. Um, that can be amazing. Uh, the only downside, though, um, is the fact that those tag rounds, those pyrotechnic ones, like, I've been shot point blank by them. With the, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, you were there <laughs> filming. But I, remember the grenade detonated within the safety range where it said it wouldn't detonate? Yeah. yeah. So, and then there was, like, a spring, like, in, in the code or something? Oh, no, yeah. It wasn't the spring. It well, was a... Uh, well, let me, let me explain. And call me a wuss if you want. I'm just trying to be, you know, completely factual. I got, I got hit by it. It went a little off target for my body armor. hit me in the elbow. Um, which I was wearing uh, BDUs, but burned away a lot of the hair on the arm. I uh, got small fragmentation uh, into my skin. Just I, they weren't metal or anything. It just like it, it's like the little gunpowder burns you get sometimes if you're like firing a revolver. Or well, something I, had a, like I had a few scabs, but um, <clears throat> and it definitely stings. <laughs> I mean, I was shot point blank, and there's an explosion, so it definitely smarted for a little bit. Call me was, I don't care. Um, so uh, thank you. So my biggest worry is like you know a young kid you know getting hit on the neck or the or face. On the, well, the face they should be wearing full face protection if they're playing in a game with those. Still, I mean that'd be kind of a shocker. A thing just blowing up right in your face mask. Of course, but the main point is also like getting shot on top of the head. I mean that it burned Ooh. away like most of the hair around the impact point, uh, pretty much all of it. So if you get shot on the top of the head, and you're not wearing a hat. Like you could definitely lose a lot of hair. You're gonna get would, a bozo haircut real yeah, quick. Yeah, and it would hurt. Um, 
So that's an issue. It's pretty much like those rounds are good to be used in games where everyone is aware that that's going to be done and they understand that ahead of time. Yes. And if people want to do that, I have no problem whatsoever. I just, you know, with our BB Wars games, we get a lot of younger yeah. kids. So we want to make sure everyone's I feel safe. like the only ones that would be, like, acceptable are, like, the chalk marking ones. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I the, so. but in reality, those are mainly used for the vehicle, so you can mark a vehicle that... Getting hit. It, it got yeah. hit. Um, in terms of, like, in a gameplay situation, I guess it could work, like, you know, if it leaves a mark on a building and everyone within a radius of that mark is, is dead, but I feel like it's it's harder to... Yeah, with, with grenades, you kind of... It's... Unless... With grenades, as long as everyone's honorable... honorable Great, but you know, if there's you know a lack of integrity or if people just don't realize they've been hit, you kind of have to have a ref there a lot of times. Just yeah, so everyone's dead. But because I've had that where it's like I'm shooting and all of a sudden ref's like you're dead. I'm like, why? Well, He's like a, a rocket landed behind you. Like, oh, oh yes. Okay, because like, sometimes you don't even know like, cause especially if it's like those the Nerf rocket ones without the the whistles on the side, you don't know that they came. You just hear thunk and then that's it. Yeah, so it's it is tough to know. I mean. I've generally had good luck with grenades. Most people that throw uh, throw them at, you know, have, uh, are nice enough to call it out or have enough integrity. I feel like um, thunder bees are probably like the best ones with that because there's no denying when it goes off near you. Correct. <laughs> Quick question: AKM for airsoft or hey Bob, uh, Twin Cities airsoft is having game this this weekend, Saturday and Sunday in Baldwin, Wisconsin. Can you please come? Uh, if if I had a bunch of disposable income and could just get on playing it out there, I would. Uh, it's only about like three, four days to the game, so I'm, I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to make it, but I do hope you have one heck of a good weekend playing out there. It's been a long time since I've been out to uh, uh, the Twin Cities, period. Hmm. Uh, it's a good area. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. SMG loadout. Well, it's been a while since we did a submachine gun loadout. That is, that is true. And I feel like it, in, in Airsoft that there's been like a, I want to say a progression away, but there's been kind of less and less SMGs, and it's just been more like you know your assault assault rifles and stuff kind of taking their place like i mean okay you've got the ump you've got the uh mp5s um you've got the ump mp5s kmp9 mp7s mp7s that's like is that it uh there's the scorpion evo Scorpion, is that okay? That is, is considered machine gun. Yeah. The the Mac 10 or Mac, Mac 11. I can't remember Mac, which one it is. Uh, we don't have one. Uh, there's a CO2 Uzi. Um, Uzi. Well, does that fall in the same category as like the Mac 10s and 11? And Uzi? Well, they're all submachine guns because they're oh, okay, they're true. you know. A, I thought I thought the Uzi stuff were, were machine pistols. Well, so so is the MP, KMP9. Okay, but it's, it's, it's still a submachine gun. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, but there's not as much variety in them. Like, I mean, well, there's there's not a lot of variety, but I think you know most airsoft companies have it, have the majority of the submachine guns anyone would want covered. Is the P90 considered a submachine gun? Interesting. I mean, it does kind of it pretty much uses a rifle round though. Yeah, so. but it's a very tiny rifle. Like yeah. that's the thing because it's like is that considered an SMG? Or that's weird. Right. I, would, I would categorize it under bullpup since it uses a rifle round. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there's also actually kind of a rare submachine gun. There's that uh, AR platform that accepts, accepts 9mm stick uh, mags. That's true, but is it, are we basing SMG off of, like, the sh size and shape or off of the caliber? I generally base SMGs off of the caliber it takes. Because okay. if it takes a rifle around, I don't, I believe that's Well, I mean, because, like, if you had that conversion, let's say, for some reason you put an M16. I don't know why you would do it, but you still consider an M16 a submachine gun if it's using the 9mm. It's using cal yeah, 9mm, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so back onto uh, actual airsoft innovations, innovations for the airsoft industry. Um, I want to talk about the actual title of the show, Airsoft Innovations, specifically because that company named Airsoft Innovations, I'm going to say it again, makes great grenades. I've been using Airsoft Innovations tornado grenades for years. Uh, now, they're not the most affordable grenades compared to Thunderbees. Uh, the ones I bought cost $100 a piece. I think right now the original tornado grenades are available for around seventy-five or eighty dollars. However, I have had zero problems with them functioning. Um, are yours impact or timer? I have a timer grenade and an impact grenade. The timer version you can set it to detonate three seconds after you throw it, or one and a half seconds after you throw it. It just matters where you put it in the pit. Well, more three seconds after you pull the pin, because <laughs> doesn't have Good a point. hammer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, the impact grenade, though, which is my personal favorite. Uh, goes off once it hits something really hard. Uh, I mean, you can shake it, it won't go off, but as soon as you like, pretty much the impact of my hand on this table will set it off, which is great. It throws BBs 360 degrees and 
pretty respectable. I've only fast. used it once, and it was the Hunger Games when we have Red Wolf Tim here. Yeah. And I was chasing after, God, I forget who I was, but I just, like, throw it as he's, like, grabbing a gun about to shoot me, and I dive behind the wall and do one of these, yeah. and I got him. Nice. Now, there are, there are fun for moments like that, and uh, I'm actually really happy uh, to talk to you about Airsoft Innovations Tornado Grades, not because, not just because I love them, been using them for years, but and I'm sure you know this, but they actually recently came out with a much, 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 much more affordable version of their grenades. It's called the Cyclone. So let me show it to you right now. We've got it pulled up on airsoftgl.com. Um, we're currently out of stock of them because we just had a bunch of orders. We're getting them back in very soon. Uh, but take a look at this. I mean, it's $39.99. The original price was, uh, the original price of the Tornado grenades were $100 and then $80. And then now they've come out with a much more affordable version in the Cyclone, it's also made out of polymer, and thankfully, I really like the fact that it has a spoon. Uh, I was gonna say that, I like that too. Yeah. Um, and for those of you that like to use grenades, whether it be Thunder Bees or um, Tornadoes like we're talking about, one thing that I have on my kit that if you watch my recent Tactical Gearheads, I'd recommend everyone who uses them do, go to, I mean, you can get them at pretty much anywhere, like you know, a sporting goods store, uh, you know, even an army surplus store, anything like that, get an S-shaped carabiner. Because how I, I have that uh, woven into the molly itself, and what I do is I just take the grenade, click in the um, the ring and the pin, pull it from there. That way you never lose your your pins again. Oh, sorry, I was tuning out. I uh, you always tune me yeah, out. Yep, that's right. Um, okay. Um, do, 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 do. What is a what's good chest protection protection with fake plates? A um, plate carrier? Yeah, well, yeah, it's such like he's essentially <laughs> asking what's a good plate carrier. Oh. Um, now, I don't, I, I'm, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think which ones actually come with fake plates. Is it a Lancer Tactical? I think one? some of the Lancer Tactical ones yeah. do. Um, um, there, wait, hold on. There, there are Lancer Tactical setups, plate carrier setups, that possibly come with plate, fake plates. However, some of them come with pretty much all the pouches you're going to need. So it's a really good deal. You get the plate carrier and you get all the pouches. I believe they're even pre mollied on there. So you can take them off, move them, but generally you got to keep in mind. You buy the plate carrier uh, for most companies mm -hmm. like Condor or Cry or whatever, and then you buy the pouches. So you just got to remember to save money for the pouches you're going to want to get. So it's a nice thing to let's tactical one gives you all the pouches straight up. Um, Another thing is it's going to be dependent on your body type. Like perfect example, I would never buy a JPC because it fit. It does not fit me like correctly at all. Correct. JPCs definitely run a little bit smaller. Um, jumpable plate carriers. I mean that's why you and I both use the the Spectre MPC. It actually fits us correctly. Yeah, they run a little bit bigger in size, and we we wear the mediums. So yeah, the, yeah, the small medium. It's because small what the the large one act. It just makes the cummerbund bigger. Yeah, it's just huge. Um, <clears throat> so as far as like a good plate carrier, um, I mean the Condor Mop C is great. A Condor Gunner. Uh, I believe it's gunner plate carrier. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of affordable ones. I would always suggest affordable. Just you know, you're not taking this thing to the Middle East and like you know running and gunning around against ISIS. You're you're, you're just playing airsoft yeah. with a lot of friends. You don't need like the craziest, strongest, most durable plate carrier ever. You just need something that, in my opinion, looks kind of cool and also is functional and is rugged enough for airsoft use. So. If you do want like an American-made plate carrier, the uh Banshees yes. are, are very good, and they're actually a pretty decent price, too, for what you're getting. Well, I, I also just really, they look awesome. They do look good. So, um, all right, let's get back to just Airsoft Innovations, because I mentioned the, the Airsoft uh, Innovations Cyclone, their newest grenade. I mentioned, you know, their uh, Tornado mm -hmm. grenade. Um, I want to talk about stuff, uh, and some of the stuff is, are things we don't carry, but we saw at SHOT Show, and they haven't really made their way into the Airsoft market in the United States yet. There's a company called Zoxna. Now, um, they've been around uh, Europe for a little while now. They've actually developed several innovative products. They've got, they've got, you might like this, an attachment for your pistol that takes a place of where you normally attach, you know, a flashlight or a laser, uh, but actually I believe it shoots 100 BBs per one pull the trigger. It's, <laughs> it's essentially a mini grenade launcher for your pistol. That's awesome. Um, so actually, let me see if I can pull it up right now. Yeah, here. Is it, uh, do, it looks like that, um... Here it is. What was that? Uh, it, it was like being tested by DARPA or something where it was like just a big box and it sounded like when it would fire, like meh, 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 meh. Oh, yeah. And it would shoot like you could shoot like a million rounds or yeah, something ridiculous. Well, you were talking about, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was essentially, it was designed as a perimeter defense yeah. thing. 
But they, yeah, they figured out a way to shoot bullets incredibly quickly. They uh, without gunpowder, or they had gunpowder, but it uses an electrical signal in between. Like, yes, there's yeah. electrical uh, charges in between each bullet, so they'd line up eleven bullets, <laughs> and then there'd be like ninety barrels. So <laughs> you know, you'd have like what, what would that be like a thousand eighty? Yeah, uh, and like, and it's funny is when they fire them all at once, it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> that rocks back. Yeah, it's just all gone. So that that doesn't really have to do anything with it. But that's stuff. what it looks like. That's kind of what it looks like. So I like that. Okay, let's take another look at it. This is the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the their pistol launcher. But mainly what I want to talk about is Zoxon has got this Oh, mortar. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Um, so this is a mortar. Uh, I haven't uh, heard or seen anyone using it uh, for airsoft in the United States. Uh, but it uses, I believe it shoots out a uh, an actual water balloon. You have a... A charge that you put a little bit of water in, then you put the water balloon in, so when it fires, it doesn't break the water balloon. Mm -hmm. And it fires pretty far, I think like 150 feet. They also had these grenades that I believe they started selling in Europe. Um, it's similar in functionality to uh, an Airsoft Innovations grenade. However, these are a lot more expensive. And, and here's it's an some. Airsoft plasma grenade from Halo. Uh, yeah, sort of. Um, I painted it to look like one. Yeah. So... They're functional, uh, they're definitely a lot more expensive, but a very interesting, interesting product or set of products from Zoxna. Uh, and I, I definitely think they're a company that you still, you want to keep your eyes on, uh, because I'm sure we'll see more and more of their products make it to the market. I would just like to see, like, a really cool functional <coughs> airsoft mortar that are, are used in Milsom Games coast to coast. Because when mm -hmm. I first started going to Milsom Games, there were functional mortars that were not only, not only they worked, but they were rather accurate. Like, we would have our our platoon sergeant calling in mortar strikes. And what they do is they launch three at a time and they'd use the uh, the Nerf... Uh, footballs? The Nerf footballs with the arrows in them, but the full-size ones that had the howlers. So not only... Yeah, you call... That's our, awesome. You, well, you call an artillery and you hear it coming in. And it was so legit. You hear it and you're like, nope, 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 yeah. nope. <laughs> well, it's just crazy. Like, what boggled my mind is the fact that, like, they were able to be so accurate with, I mean, shooting, like, Nerf footballs. And something that, honestly, they probably built in their like basement or something like that because i've seen a lot of them where it's like they do just some work with like an air tank and some pvc and yeah. they work amazing Very true. like well uh when i was at broken home that one guy all he carried around was this rocket launcher that he nicknamed thumper hmm. and he's just like oh going in Thunk, and just shoots out and hits the car <laughs> uh, i got a question from justice ward in terms of team patches how would you guys go about getting them that's a very interesting question uh, i believe bill and i have actually both had patches mm -hmm. made um for short notice, uh, for affordability, we've both gone to, I believe, is Mutinous Creations. Yeah, I think they're based in Vegas. Uh, now they're based they're, in Vegas. They're now they're based in Vegas. California, yeah. Um, Mutinous Creations, I think they changed their name uh, a little while back, but I believe if you search Mutinous Creations, you can still find their website. I will Google it real quick. Uh, they're very nice folks. I would highly suggest going through them. They're very affordable, uh, very quick to get a patch done. Um, yeah. Let's see. Bob, do you know a good AEG for $200? There are actually quite a few options you're going to have in that price range. It's called Mutiny Shop now. Mutiny Shop. Okay, yeah. so if you're looking for team patches, Mutiny Shop is a great place to start. Um, a good uh, good AEG for $200. There are going to be a lot of options in that price range. Uh, our G4 series mm -hmm. is great, and you get a pretty much a, um, a custom gun right out the gate. Um, you're going to have options to choose from. There's also G&G uh, &G Combat Machines. Those are priced generally around 150 um, Lancer Tactical has full, med full metal Lancer Tacticals around the $200 price range. Do we still have the, uh, what was it, the KWAs? The ones that had like the polymer upper? Um, yeah, the CQRs. Yeah, the CQRs. Um, there's a polymer lower, but no, I think uh, lower, we cycle those out, and I, I believe the new uh, uh, full metal KWA guns are just a little bit over yeah. 200 yeah, so yeah, I think they are. yeah Caterway KM4 is another great option too they've made their production line more efficient so all of their full metal KWA guns are a lot more affordable around the $200 price point if I don't miss my guess so um do, 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 do. 817 Airsoft will you be at BB War Spearhead sadly I will not I desperately want to go back uh, and play D14. D14's made some, had a lot of construction done. Yeah, they just added some buildings to their trench network. It looks so cool. I really want to go yeah. back. I've got some family stuff to deal with that weekend. Uh, however, you will be in very good hands with that field and with our GI staff. That's going to be a legit game. Um, do, 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 do. Actually, let's talk more about game-changing products because a little, a few months back, we had some folks from BL Tech. They're out of based oh, yeah. New Zealand. Um, they had their boss unit here. I don't know why I'm touching this gun for the boss unit, but it essentially looks like a grenade launcher, uh, but it functions as um, a sound simulator. 
Um, it hooks up to the gun and for every pull of the trigger, it's going to emit a loud noise that sounds sort of like a gunshot, not as specifically loud, uh, but it adds a lot, a lot of fun factor to the airsoft battlefield, whether you're on the receiving end or you're on the giving end. From what we noticed from the gameplay of those boss units, um, a lot of folks that were um, on the shooting end of the boss units, i.e. like they were on the same team as the folks with the boss units, were more likely to move up because they felt like they were getting suppressive fire um, just from the sound of it. And conversely, on the other side, say. on the other side, people who were getting shot at by them were more likely to move back a little bit well, because nope, they... Nope, 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 Well, they <laughs> felt more suppressed psychologically because yeah. of the sound. Um, so it's very interesting. And in all honesty, like, you know, I've been to games where they have blank fire going on or where they have a, a machine gun hooked up to propane. Mm -hmm. um, so just hearing, you know, rounds pop off or rounds pop off it really adds to the, you know, allure, or at least, like, the feeling of being in an actual battle. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I've never been in an actual battle. I'm not prior military. But it just it gives you that um, suspension of disbelief, the immersion. So it's pretty it's cool. It's, like, the closest I've gotten is, with like, when I had my LM4. Because, I mean, those things, like, I mean, they're not loud, but no. you can hear them, them working and, like, you can hear them firing. It's louder than an AEG. But could you imagine, like, an LM4 with a boss unit? Except it only works on AEGs, doesn't it? Doesn't have to work off the battery. Yeah, or yeah it like does. That. Yeah, yeah. No, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, well, they do. Um, and speaking of uh, innovations, um, there was that. I believe it's the MFG Venom. It's uh, something you add onto the front of your uh, uh, the barrel that actually lights up when you fire. Oh, I think I remember seeing that now. And I believe it has a small sound simulator in it, so it's hmm. not like super loud, but it gives you the effect of a muzzle flash. Um, Greg Wong was using it for a little while. And it's I remember. Okay, before. now I remember. That's where I saw uh, it. It looks really cool. And uh, it's not the most affordable thing out there, but it looks really cool. Probably so. it works really good at night. Yeah, but you, that one you can use with an LM4. And what's interesting about that is, you know the gas that comes out of the barrel? It eliminates the gas and makes it look. Exactly. Hmm. So that would be legit. I believe it's the MFG Venom. Okay, real tanks and airsoft. That's from the Define Airsofter. A very interesting question. <clears throat> um, one of the first airsoft games I went to, or first big Milsom events, um, they had, I believe, four different tanks. There were ATVs. I don't, actually, I don't know if it's ATVs is the correct term. It was... was ATC? No, it was an all-terrain vehicle that had six wheels, and it was amphibious. It's like a small one. They are originally designed for, like, ranches or places with a lot of mud. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, where it's like, they're all, like, it's like wheel, wheel, wheel. Yeah, three I wheels and a line yeah, on yeah, each yeah. side, yeah. So, but what they do is they added on plywood or uh, other barriers to make it look like a tank, and they mm -hmm. put a turret on the top. So there were four of those, and those function as legit armor because, you know, you had two machine guns, some of them had rocket launchers, but they're all amphibious. Um, so those are the first airsoft tanks I saw. However, in California, we've had a lot of games where, you know, folks will bring out the APC. Um, mm -hmm. Like Disposable Heroes are connected with a gentleman that brings out an APC to certain Milsim games per year. I love seeing the APC uh, in airsoft combat. I would kind of worry about a real tank in airsoft combat. I feel like you would need a lot of people... Or at least a few people around it to make sure no one got legitimately run over. Well, I mean, they're, they are not that much larger than an APC. A tank? I think a main battle tank would be... Uh, well, I mean, the thing is, you're not going to get an Abrams, but you might be able to get, like, an old Russian tank or something. Well, in like Russia, they have T-72s. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, airsoft. I've used... The, I've, uh, about years and years ago, before I worked here at, uh, I believe now it's called Jungle Island, back then it was called Jericho, they had an APC that was actually used in game. Like we were inside of it, and then they're like, as soon as they stop, they're like, "I right, go!" Door opens, and you know you're in pitch black, and then it's bright, and you had to run out. And also, that was the same time that they had mounted a M249 to it mm -hmm. in the gunner's position, and I was in there just like, ah! it was awesome. Uh I actually want to go back a little bit because uh, there have been folks that have used legitimate tanks in airsoft. And they're like over in Europe and yeah. stuff? Yeah, over in Europe, I believe it's Operation Birgit or another Eastern European operation where they have um, BMPs, which are, you know, the Soviet-style uh, armored personnel character carriers. Uh, they have T-72s. With T a big turret. What? With a big turret. The no, BMPs? A BMP doesn't have a huge turret. It's kind of small. Well, I mean, it's enough for you to be like, nope. I'm done. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Wait, aren't those the ones where the fuel tank was in the door? Uh, I don't know about that one. Let me pull up a picture of a BMP. Just I so think it know. was. I remember watching a thing where it was like top 10 like armored, armored personnel characters, car yeah, carriers, and um, I think it was the BMP. Like the guys would be like, oh man, this rear armor is so thick. And it was because it was the fuel tank. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Here is a BMP in case you 
out there in our audience would are curious to see what I'm showing though. That's a BMP, um, a BMP one. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, there are some games in the uh, east in Eastern Europe that have have these vehicles at their airsoft games, which is crazy awesome. I could see though why that would be like actually a good like personnel care because it does look like a tank. It does kind of look like a tank. The tough part for when this is built for you know Russian troops is that they really did not give much effort at all to the comfort of the troops inside. Oh, yeah, no. Very little space. This thing, like if it like is going over a rough train or banging around, like you're looking at broken arms from what I've read, which is not a whole lot, but something. Um, what? That's a whole lot of nope. A whole lot of nope. Um, so that being said, why don't we talk about uh, other airsoft innovations? When I first started playing airsoft. There was pretty much no smoke grenades available. Oh yeah, commercially now purchased. there's like because I remember even like just a few years back, I was like I was like, I wonder if there's any affordable smoke grenades. And the thing is, there there really wasn't anything because everything. The problem was, especially in California, is you have to have cool uh, cold burning. Yes, you can't have one that like you know a standard one because they actually get incredibly hot. I think the real military ones there will sometimes actually be a burn ring around where the smoke went off because that they can get so hot. But, I mean, now you've got uh, Manola Gay, you've got Smart Smoke, God, I can't talk, Sport Smoke, and all those other ones where it it's affordable, too. Like, I think, like, you know, you can get, like, four or five of the big Anola Gay grenades for, like, right under 50 bucks. Which yeah, is, I think the big ones are around 11 bucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I must have gotten a deal. So we, we carry Sport back. Smoke, which <clears throat> is, is great because it's, it's pretty much just white smoke, which that color is the, uh, someone explained this to me very well the other day. White smoke is the one which is most likely to obscure your vision. Mm -hmm. um, however, Nola Gay uh, smoke grenades, uh, they come out in a variety of colors, which is really cool. It's yeah. pretty, pretty dope to see like, multiple I like the green. the green. The green smoke. For the rock. I didn't even think about that. Oh. I just like, because my favorite color. I've got green smoke. Because my favorite color is green. But. Oh. Um, someone just mentioned some Justice Ward. Fun fact, APCs were first designed for chemical warfare. Troop safety wasn't a huge concern back then, sadly. Very interesting. I hope that's yeah. correct because that makes a far too much amount of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's see. Any other airsoft innovations we can talk about? Um, oh, yeah. I got one. Um, when PTS first came out with the ERG, the electric recoil gun, that was the first time I saw an AEG that had recoil mm -hmm. that could rival a gas blowback rifle. I, I could have said that better. But uh, that Probably. being said... It definitely opened up a whole whole new set of possibilities for me because I generally... What are you looking at? My watch buzzed. Oh, that's right. That's a fancy watch. Um, that opened up a whole lot of new possibilities for me because, I mean, yeah, I'll use an AEG because it's very functional and you have a lot of firepower. I personally prefer gas blowback rifles, gas blowback submachine guns, and gas blowback pistols for the realism. Um, however, with the ERG, you get a substantial amount of recoil. You get the cutoff feature. Mm -hmm. And you still have the uh, the performance or competitive value of using an AEG. Like today, we, you know, we got to test out the KWA mm -hmm. AKR seventy four. That was a lot of fun on full auto. That's the ERG version uh, of KWA's AK. So pretty awesome. We have it right here. And one of the things I found really nice is that when you fire this thing dry, they've got an extended uh, follower so that it gets through the entire magazine right there. Uh, you're going to get every BB out the magazine. But when you're done shooting, you know, the gun's going to stop working, and then you have to press in a new mag and then rack the charging handle till you can fire again. I yeah, think. I didn't quite know that when I was shooting this thing. Like, I put in a fresh mag, and I'm, like, pulling the trigger. I'm like, why is it not going? And I'm, like, sitting there for, like, two minutes. I was like, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, most airsofters will forget to do that. But for those folks that are concerned with, you know, uh, training how you fight, you know, remembering to you know rack the rack the charging handle every time can be you know a life or death. So that's a really yeah. Cool I think that I mean it's I mean I I was used to my LM4, which you manipulate like a real AR, and since I had the bad lever, like you know I'd know it lock back, put in one, click the bad lever, mm -hmm. and then just keep going. Um, someone's asking Daniel Ryan is asking, do you think spring airsoft guns will become extinct? Uh, Daniel Ryan, no, I do not think they'll become extinct. One because they're so cheap to manufacture. Two, because the amount of fun you can have with them at such an affordable price is hard to pass up. Uh, and three, I mean, there are always going to be those folks that, you know, can only afford to get an airsoft at a certain price range. You know, I, growing up, I had a lot of friends who couldn't afford a gas blowback pistol or a pistol. 
other than other than a spring pistol. So um, we inevitably, all of us as a group, all about spring pistols. So we could play together. And I'll be honest, like when everyone has a spring gun that you're playing against, it is an obscene amount of fun. Even if it's like bolt action rifles, mm -hmm. it is an unbelievable. I was gonna say they're also probably the most reliable out of all of the types, like AEG gas. I I think spring's probably the most reliable of all the guns. Yeah, uh, I would say, yeah, maybe like the spring sniper rifles. Yeah. I mean, a spring pistol, I wouldn't say. Well, yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking about like, you know, like maybe your spring shotguns and your spring uh, sniper rifles. Just because less moving parts. Like way less moving parts than any yes. other gun. Uh, someone was just asking, uh, how much is the AK that Bill's holding and how much is it? This is the KWA AKR-74M. This is KWA's. AK electric recoil gun. Heavy amount of recoil for an AG, which is awesome. Um, this is currently available for pre-order on our website for I believe $279.95. Yeah. Um, so check it out. We should be getting these in soon. This is awesome. I, it's tough because I know I want an M4 ERG, but I do like AKs, so it's just tough. It, shooting actually made me kind of want to like buy a real AK. Yeah. Like, like I, I feel like it'd be fun just to be like, all right, let's load up as many mags as I can and see if I can break it. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I like the fact you have to cycle the charging handle every time. That's it's a lot easier when you're left-handed on these ones, though, because, you know, you gotta... Because mm -hmm. you have to reach under or however you do it. I'm just... Yeah. And go. Really quick question. Abramson Kids, any more Top Tech challenges? Yes, we are working on Top Tech challenges. More than likely, we should get one out for the month of May. Uh, if you guys have any topics for the Top Tech challenge you'd like us to cover, by all means, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear your feedback. We're working on our own Top Tech challenges, but if... If you guys suggest something that's really popular, or really stupid, or really crazy, or all of the above, we might just do it instead. So, by all means, let us know in the comments below. Um, do, 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 do. Um, this is interesting. What parts on the KWA LM4 should I upgrade first? Very um, interesting question. Very first thing, Maple Leaf uh, Hop-Up Bucking and Tensioner. Um, that's the one that, I don't think yours ever got that upgrade. But it, it's basically, it's a, repla it's, a, it's a replacement because I think the standard tensioner is either copper or brass one of the two it's a weaker metal the new when you replace it you get a steel tensioner which has a better shape and then the maple leaf bucking is a dual kind of fin design and you'll you will pick up range and accuracy that was that was the first upgrade i did to mine um other than that there's really not much else to do to it now i feel bad for having to do this because this may not be as helpful for you i'm actually going to disagree with bill I have never had that those upgrades on my LM4, and I've been using it longer than you. I've actually had like really good accuracy with just the stock setup. However, the one thing that actually helped me is the cup seal the mod. Cup seal mod. The cup seal mod is the only real modification I've had done to my LM4, um, and it pretty much ensured that I had really good seal, good seal in the cup. No, I just had really good seal on the gun itself, so that you know my gas efficiency was there. The, uh, the consistency. Gun, the consistency was there. The gun was going to fire every time. It's pretty much uh, something that they have integrated into all of their gas AKs now. All of them come with a cup seal mod. Uh, I don't think they had come up with it until their AK line came out. Um, so their LM4s didn't come stock with it. I don't know if they. I haven't checked the new stock of LM4s. Yeah, they, it's, it's they I know the. the I know the um, PTS uh, Masada has comes, the cup seal has mod. The cup yeah. seal mod. Um, so I believe if you <clears> want to get that done, you can get it sent into our text here at Airsoft GI. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I know Bill was really happy with his maple leaf bucking. Um, my gun has still been very accurate without it. I think if you change it, it'll be even better. Maybe. Uh, although, I mean, I'm pretty good shot with it. I'm not going to say anything. But, well, I um, so, oh, okay. So, those are the two suggestions we have for uh, uh, adding on to your LM4. Uh, will you come to Europe to play airsoft? I think we'd totally come to Europe if someone footed the bill for yeah, us to come I out totally there. just come to Europe in general. I want to see Europe. Yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I've never seen Europe. I, I am very curious as to what is there. Uh, I hear there are nice things. Yeah, like I heard that in Italy they have ruins. I hear uh, London is there. Uh, they they had a show called Top Gear there. Top I used to Gear, watch. Yes. Uh, no, flights are very expensive across the pond, so we can't just go out there any chance. No, we flights can. are expensive from one state to another. Yeah. Well, I've always wanted to go to Operation Birgit, which is in Europe. Um, I mean, it's from what I remember, it's like the biggest airsoft operation in the world of the year every year. So I've always wanted to go. To I'd that. like to go to Spain. Spain's very similar to here in terms of weather. I hear Spain is a country. Hey, I do too. All right, uh, this is going to be one of our last questions. What do you think of non-blowback pistols? From That's from Brock Harbin. Um, I actually have some very specific thoughts. So I'm going to jump in. I have been sniped more times by non-blowback pistols than by actual snipers. Because yeah. 
they are generally incredibly quiet, and all the gas is going right down that barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, so not only are they incredibly quiet, uh, but they usually shoot with a pretty good velocity on them. Um, so yeah, there's been so many times I've been shot, have no idea where it comes from, but I, I know I'm dead, uh, and it's usually by a non-blowback pistol. It actually happens a lot at either Game Pod or Attack City. Someone will just have a good angle on me, and you cheer. That's it. <laughs> so. I've never had any experience with the non-blowback pistols. The only experience is probably a revolver, but I don't know if you, you count that. Because, I mean, a real revolver doesn't blow back. You still have to blow well, it. Well, it has blowback. Well, I mean, like, like that. Recall, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't consider that. Well, that's a tough one. Uh, I've, honestly, I prefer not to use non-blowback pistols just because... I like the blowback. That's that's most of the fun. It kind of lets me know when I'm out of BBs. That that's true. However, if you're just going purely off of stealth, non-blowback pistols are a huge win. So what was it years ago? Wasn't it the Marui? Well, that was the pistol Sam Fisher used. It was like a Tokyo Marui came out with one that it was the pistol that like giant laser box thing on the bottom, and then the suppressor. It's a Mark Twenty Three. That's Socom. what it is. The Socom. Yeah. I, if I remember it's an correctly, offensive pistol. I remember if I remember correctly, those old ones like back before it was illegal had a foam suppressor, and no one would ever hear you with them. Bob and Bill, any Spas Twelve TM loadout suggestions? It would be cool. Oh shoot. It would be cool if TM brought out a gas version like the N Seventy. Yes, it would totally be cool if TM came out with another gas shotgun. That'd be awesome. Um, <coughs> bless you. Yeah. Spots 12, uh, shotgun loadout suggestions. Didn't you have one? Uh, no, I never owned a Spots 12. Oh. My buddy Chris, uh, has a Spots 12, which he got it after watching Jurassic Park, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I always want, I never understood the hook part, what the hook is. That is so that you can, that basically rests around your arm so you can shoot one-handed. Oh! Yeah. Well, that's cool. Legit. Um, personally, I've been playing, uh, Pistol Shotgun Night a lot recently with, uh, industry friends. Um... Literally, I will just go out with a bandolier, a Condor bandolier, shotgun bandolier with all the shotgun shells in it, uh, and then just a sidearm on my right, on my right hip, and then extra, uh, extra pistol mags on my left hip, and face mask. I'm good to go. So, for me, shotgun, I, you know, it's just going out to have a good time. So, in all honesty, I just get a bandolier or a belt set up, and you're fine. If you want to breach your loadout, that's something different. I mean, obviously, you're going to want to play carrier helmet, face mask, uh, something to carry shotgun shells. But for me. It's kind of nice to be lightweight with shotguns. That's my opinion. You know, shotgun shells fit very well in molly webbing. Uh, no. Yeah. Like the the little webbing, you can put them in there. And oh, I don't know. Works very well. Well, I don't know what molly. I I just have a problem getting them out quickly enough. Yeah. That's why I like the Condor shotgun <coughs> bandolier because um the the webbing is elastic, so like you can just get it's it elastic out. Elastic sized. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, all right, we are running up to the tail end of the show. We'll see if there's any more quick comments we can uh, go to. Light machine guns and airsoft. That's a statement. We're going to address it as if it was a question. Um, yes. Light machine guns and airsoft. <laughs> good or bad, plus, negative. I think it's a total plus and awesome. I've always wanted to use one. I've never never used them before, but I've always wanted to. Oh, I know. I've, I've sadly never been able to use one myself, but every time I'm around someone with one, it's awesome. Uh, or most of the times. Like, uh, Daniel, a uh, former coworker of ours, has the Crytac limited edition light machine gun, and that thing was rocking and I, rolling. I thought he sold it and got the enhanced because he wanted the key mod. Did I say enhanced or regular? You said right, the uh, limited, limited edition, edition, which it would look like the... Uh, he had the, the MT49 yeah. front end. He had the limited <clears throat> edition, and then he sold it and got the enhanced version because it looks cooler. Um, but when he had the original limited edition, he was rocking and rolling at American Milsom's Ironclad. It was so nice to have a support gunner there. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. He took it to Ironclad. Yeah, because a lot of Milsom games, you know, you're you're limited on magazine capacity if you're a regular rifleman. However, with a support weapon like a light machine gun, you know, you can have a box mag, which will hold thousands of rounds. So you can be very important uh, to your squad, platoon, or company when you're using a light machine gun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun, too. It also helps because the Crytek light machine gun is, like, really, really light. Super light. Yeah, like, it's a true light machine gun. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Want two extra tickets to Operation Birgit to Europe? Uh, I would definitely love two extra tickets. If I can make my way to Europe in time for that, I would totally go. Daniel Ryan, so feel feel free to private message me or direct message me on Facebook at Bob the Axe Man. That's my little fan page. Uh, so let me know, and uh, it would be so cool if I could make it. Uh, I mean, maybe you can come too, Bill. Uh, but that being said, uh, thank you for the offer, and if it is serious, please direct message me on Bob the Axe Man on Facebook. Um, all right, guys, that is going to be it for our live show today. It is just about 5.15. I desperately got to go to the bathroom. I was trying to pretend I didn't have to. Don't want to do the pee-pee dance. But last little thing. 
Make sure to check out these custom guns on airsoftgi.com. These should be up there by tomorrow, maybe tomorrow morning. And uh, this is going to be, I, I just, it sounds so cool racking this AK like this. So that's awesome. Check this out. Check out the uh, AKR-74M, the new ERG from KWA. It's currently on pre-order. We should be getting this in very soon. Once again, I'm Bob the Axeman Hildebrand. This guy here is... Banta Bill. And this is the GITV Live Show. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.